What's up, YouTube? We got 2009 Harley Davidson Street Glide. We're going to be changing both wheels on, so I'm going to show you how to take both off and on. Uh, basic tools, not that hard. So let's get it started. First thing we're going to do is come in, flathead, take off this safety clip, safety clip off, get that out the way. Uh, we're going to take these two bolts here, crack them loose. We'll take a caliper, lift it up, kind of twist it back and forth, open up the pads, and kind of roll it out. I like to take a Crown Royal bag, slide it in, set it off to the side, scratch nothing everybody's happy next I'll take a 19 millimeter I'm going to take the bottom bolt out of both shocks Oops. move it out the way and we'll do the other one the reason why I did that is so I don't have to take the mufflers off or the slip-ons or whatever you want to call it and so now what we can do is actually lower the bike now we can get to this nut it's a uh, 36 millimeter there's our nut get the bolt a couple wax so we better get our cam cam adjustment washer off I can push it that easy, but sometimes you gotta go to the other side. What you're gonna do is see if we can't get the spacer up there. Whoa. This is being held on, on a, a ledge right here. And then here's your spacer. Let's go to the other side. Next thing we're gonna do, take a half inch take these hanger bolts off you can gingerly push down the exhaust another reason for taking the suspension off is so you can clear this bar and push this down you can clear the muffler uh, but I'm going to go lift the bike up a little bit so the axle will clear this uh, saddlebag support now that it's clear If you like, you can put a rag on your muffler. I'm confident enough. Pull your axle out. There goes your spacer. What I like to do is just temporarily put this bolt back in the swing arm. The swing arm will drop down too low and it makes getting the wheel out too uh, harder. Anyways, so we're gonna push the wheel forward, grab the bottom of the belt and kind of walk it off the pulley. So now let's lift the bike up and get the wheel out. You have to raise it all the way up. If it's up high enough, what you can do is kick out the bottom. Then take our drive lug off. Take our rubber isolators. That's it. Go to the front. Out of the front, first thing we're gonna do is take this axle nut off, which is a 24 millimeter. Come on. Got a nut and a washer. Now we're gonna take the caliper uh, bolt off. It, this is a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. It has to be a 10 millimeter, has to be a 12 point, nothing else. Don't try. Before you take this bolt all the way out, make sure you're supporting the caliper so it doesn't just fall and hit your fender. And drop it down. 
We're going to twist it, open the pads up just a little bit, and then we're going to roll it off. And again, crown oil bag. You don't have to worry about scratching your fender as you're moving things around. Let's go to the other side. We're going to take off this uh, axle cap. It's got two half inch nuts, a lock washer, and a regular washer on each one. Cap off, then take the wheel off. I like to support the wheel. Look at that. Spacer on each side. Take your axle out all the way. Spacer and axle. I have to lift the bike up some, get it out all the way. Now for some reason you're not able to lift it up all the way like this. You can do the same like you did in the back, but what I do is turn the wheel. And then you can kick out the bottom. Um, another thing, uh, the rotor on here has an arrow. If it doesn't, I suggest marking on the rotor the rotation. Because these look like custom wheels and I don't see any markings on them to indicate which way the wheel needs to go. Other than the rotor. Alright, come back and show you how to put everything back together. Well guys, got the wheel tires, put new tires on, got them. Customer wanted some Dunlop American Elites, not a bad tire. Um, he will need wheel bearings for front and rear though. They're not super bad, but they're kind of crunchy. Anyways, so that's another thing to check. Besides the uh, rotation of the tire, check that before you leave the shop. You have to make multiple trips and then them done. Oh, we didn't do that. Like, yeah, you did. No, we didn't. He must have had someone else mess with it. I love that, eh? Anyways, so put the wheel in. I'm gonna lower the bike down a bit. Stick our wheel spacers in. They have these groove lines. I face them outward. The, the last time I read a service manual, that's what they told you to do. The next thing I did right, is lube, clean and lube my axle. I'm going to do is put spacer on, kind of get it started, get in there, alright, and then grab the other spacer, make sure the grooves are out, and poke the axle through just a little bit to hang the spacer on, make sure the spacers are up against the bearings, lift her up, and a stab in your axle in, bada bing, bada boom, you know. We'll take our axle cap, it has out. That means it faces outward, like the grooves on your spacer. Then, now I'm sure this is common sense for most people, but just in case, you have a washer, a lock washer, or a split washer, I'm sure you can see it split, and then a nut. You're going to put the washer on first. Split washer next, or lock washer, and then the nut. I like to stack them like this. Get it ready. Out. Slide it in. Get started. And do the same for the other one. Just gonna kind of get those started for now. Get our caliper on. Check our brake pads. He's about halfway worn out on this side. I like to start at the bottom because you usually don't have a lot of room up here. Get our axle washer nut. Now this nut is directional. You want the cone part facing outward. That is, is they pinch it just ever so slightly so that it cut when you get when it gets to it the threads on the axle it kind of <clears throat> locks down on the threads now the torques i'm about to give you 
torque specifications, uh, make sure you verify them. Do not, I mean, you can use mine as a guideline, but do not make sure you verify. So I'm taking my 24 millimeter from my axle nut to 65 foot pounds. Now on the other side of the axle, you'll notice there's a hole. Take the screwdriver, you want the hole parallel with the ground, use the screwdriver or whatever to keep the axle from spinning. I'm going to tighten that up. All right, now we're going to take our 10.12 millimeter, torque your calipers to 35 foot pounds. I'm at 37, I think the max was 38. There we go, let's do the other side. All right, now we're going to do this axle cap. When you tighten this up, there's a gap. You want to make sure that's even going uh, when you finally get a torque on it and the torque is 20 foot pounds start tightening this down There we go. Gap looks pretty even on both sides. Spin it. Make sure it spins pretty free. And then pump your brakes up. There we go. Now let's go do the back. First thing we're gonna do is take our rubber isolator, stick it in. Alright, the bearing's not feeling too hot in this one either. So Alright, here we go. Now you put the wheel in the same way you took it out. In reverse. Slide it under. There we go. Slow it down. First thing we're gonna do is roll the wheel forward, start our belt from the top to the bottom, and make sure our wheel's nice, our wheel's square with the bike. Next, I'm gonna loosen up this bolt on the swing arm, move that out the way. I'm gonna grab my washer, it's a thin one, stick it between the swing arm and the wheel. I've already cleaned and lubed with anti seize my axle. I usually go through the spacer first, then the wheel. There we go. Now I usually go just on the inside of this bar. All right, let's go to the other side real quick. Now next what I'm going to do, grab my brake caliper bracket. This groove right here is going to go on this shelf or ledge. Like that, make sure it's in there all the way. Moves freely. Again, this one's got grooves. Those face outward. What you can do is lift this up, kind of work it behind between the wheel and the, the wheel and the bracket. Oh come on. Oh, where are you going, buddy? Alright, let's reset. Go there. Go there. Wiggle, wiggle. Nope. Not the right wiggle. Oh, there it goes. Like the pop. Then I'm going to start pushing my axle through. Holding my spacer until it's already started in the spacer. 
get some tapping. down some and take our uh, cam washer you can see the witness mark on what where the nut was riding but it's a you see it's a D slot axle has a flat spot and only go on that way and then it needs to go up against this lug ledge like that I like to just if I can spin it backwards grab our nut again it's cone shaped cone faces outward I'm gonna take my torque wrench reset it 20 foot pounds this is not the final torque what you're doing is just preloading the axle that when you go to make the adjustment to your belt and everything your axle won't move as easy and losing your, your adjustment there you go. Like I said, so the axle doesn't move forward and back and all that garbage. All I'm going to do is I'm lift the bike up to get this bolt started. There you go. You need to get the wheel off the ground because I got to spin it. It also kind of puts everything where it needs to be. Swing out not too far down or up or whatever. Now I got the wheel up in the air. I'm going to grab my wrench, turn this till the belt starts to tighten up. Almost there. So right now it's on the tight side, but the other reason for getting the wheel off the ground is you need to be able to spin the wheel. What it does is it equals, equalizes the belt out. See now it's loosened up. All right, just a little too snug. Roll it forward just a little bit. Don't take much. There we go. Now check it again. There we go. That's ought to be good. Lower the bike down. Take this bolt out. Lower the bike down. Some more. Now what I'm going to do is, that wrench you see me with on the other side, I'm going to go and have that on the other side of the axle. I'm going to hold it to keep the axle from spinning while I use my torque wrench to tighten this nut. Okay, so you're going to be using both hands. And your torque spec is going to be 100 foot pounds. Put this on my nut. Then the wrench on the other side, that is not supposed to move. That's supposed to keep the axle from spinning when you tighten on this. Our safety clip on. Make sure it pops in there and it spins. And go ahead and lift the bike back up. Put our bolts in for our shocks. Now, I suggest just starting them because sometimes some bikes like the other start needs to start first. Then you have to do this side. It's you kind of got to do this back and forth thing sometimes. I'm going to take our 19 millimeter and torque this down to 65. I always like to check the top. Good. Good there. Now we're going to take our caliper, take the bag, crown bag off. Now these brake pads are looking a little on the thin side. Usually roll that on. Take our hardware. Again, started by hand. Now we're gonna torque it to 45 foot pounds. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go finish up on the other. Oh, pump the brakes up. Right, now we're gonna go to the other side and uh, finish up. Right, we're gonna finish this. Grab our half inch, our hanger hardware. I believe these are tightened down to 20 foot pounds, but it, I'm sure it differs between the uh, exhaust manufacturers. These are aftermarket. As you do that, give them a little snug. They got they are lock nights. Not that's it. There you go guys, 2009 Harley Davidson Street Glide. Shows you how to take both wheels off and on. Without having to take the exhaust off. Uh, that's usually one of the hardest parts that I've ever had to deal with. If I can avoid taking that muffler off or any exhaust parts off, uh, I try to find a way around it. Even it might, uh, it might not take, uh, sometimes it might take longer. You know, sometimes those mufflers just slip, wiggle right off sometimes. Woo, man. But it, it's a for sure thing, you know, taking those shocks off, moving them down. I know every time it's going to work. But exhaust, ah, it's a hit or miss. A lot of times it miss. So anyways, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Go down there, comment, just be gentle, please. And subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, adios.